What if one morning I wake up, turn on my PC, and Adobe has vanished from existence? No After Effects, no Premiere Pro, nothing. Just gone. Like, it never existed. So, let's say, with all the apps we know, I'm stuck with only two choices. One is the app I'm already familiar with, CapCut. The other, an app I've never touched before, but I've heard a lot about. A powerful companion to CapCut that might just break the beginner scene. That app is Filmora. Now, the real question is, if I had to start over, which one would be my new home? While it may seem impossible to create perfect designs in these programs, it's time to bring some beautiful motion graphics to life. You're about to learn animations that are not only popular, but also challenging, even in a program like After Effects. These are the high-level motivational animations used by top pages. And once you master them, no one will believe they were made with simpler apps. This tutorial shows one thing. Skills beat software, creativity breaks limits, and today, I'm going to prove that. If you take a close look at these three motion graphics, you'll notice that the main elements are shapes, from circles to lines. If we craft them together well, we can create these animations. Now, in Filmora, it's easy. To make a circle, click on the Shape tool and choose the ellipse shape. Then, hold Shift and draw a perfect circle. To change its color, go to the Fill option and select Gradient Fill. Change the white color to a shade of gray. Then adjust the gradient angle. We don't need a border, so turn it off. Now, let's center our circle in the middle of the screen and add a text layer. Write your text and place it on the circle. Because of the gradient color, this shape creates a 3D illusion and appears bold. Now, in CapCut, it's a whole different story. Unfortunately, there are no shape tools, but, you know, we can figure that out. First, add a text layer to the timeline, then type a space to create an empty text box. Next, scale it up a little. Now, go to the background option, enable it, and choose a gray shade for the color. Increase the rounded rectangle to the maximum and adjust the width until it starts looking like a circle. Now, let's duplicate the layer and set the background color of the duplicated layer to black. If you disable the top layer, you'll see the gray one underneath. Next, create a compound clip for each layer separately. While selecting the top layer, go to the mask option, add a mask, and choose split. Then, increase the feather until it starts to look like a gradient on the bottom layer. Now, select both layers and create another compound clip. Scale it down a bit, add a text layer, write your text, and place it in the center of the circle. That's quite a trick, but it still works for us. Now that we have our circle, we're going to create our first animation in Filmora and CapCut. We're stepping into a challenging part, and this will be the most nerve-wracking moment of me deciding which program to choose. So we're going to add three gray circles and one smaller purple circle. Then I'm going to create a compound clip for each circle and its text. The purple circle will be in a separate compound clip. Now I'm going to create a triangular position path for the purple circle by adding a position keyframe every four seconds. Now, right-click on one of the keyframes and choose Show Keyframe Animation. Then, I'm going to turn off Path Curve and click on Curve Presets. Select all keyframes, choose this curve, and grab the Bezier handle to make sure it's straight, just like I'm showing. I'm going to choose the same curve preset for the X position as well. As you can see, it moves very smoothly along the path. Now, right-click on the keyframes and select Hide Keyframe Animation. 
I want to add some glow to the purple circle, so I'm going to enable Drop Shadow and select the Soft option. I'll set the blur to 27%, opacity to 100%, and change the shadow color to pink. Now, I want the gray circles to turn purple when the purple ball reaches them and change back to gray when it moves away. So, I'm going to start adding color keyframes for the power circle. First, go to the color section and create a keyframe in the whole color menu. Then, adjust the tint, vibrance, and saturation as I'm doing. Next, move forward a few frames until the purple circle moves away and reset all the color keyframes so the power circle changes back to gray. I'm going to repeat the same steps for each gray circle. So every time the purple circle gets close to them, they will start turning pink. And when it moves away, they will change back to gray. Now in the effects menu, search for shockwave scan. Then grab the ray scan effect and drop it onto the money circle. This way, when the purple circle gets near it, the effect acts like a scan and makes the color brighter, adding a cool visual effect. The next thing I'm going to add is the color glow effect above all the layers. By increasing the feathering, it will create a perfect smooth glow across the entire screen. Lastly, I'm going to create a circle wave around the money circle. Using the shape tool, I'll create a big circle. Then I'll disable the fill and change the border color to pink. Next. I'll add a pink shadow to it so it glows as well. Now, when the purple circle reaches the money circle, I'll add a scale keyframe for the circle wave. I'll grab the keyframe, move it a bit forward, and then where I'm at, I'll decrease the scale to the minimum. This way, we give it a scaling up effect. Then I'm going to create a compound clip for this as well. Now I'll add an opacity keyframe to it, decreasing the opacity to a minimum just before the wave reaches its maximum scale. Let's just adjust the keyframes a little bit to see how it looks. Now grab the wave layer and place it below all the other layers and we're done. Just like that, we've created this beautiful animation in Filmora. It's definitely very satisfying to work with when creating motion graphics. Now, in CapCut, everything is almost the same, but we need to adjust a few things. For example, just like in Filmora, we're going to create position keyframes for the purple circle every four seconds. Then, in keyframe animation, after selecting all the keyframes, we'll choose Cubic Ease. Also, just like we did in Filmora, we need an effect for the money circle, and we can use Hollow Scan. Simply grab it and drop it onto the circle. However, since it doesn't work exactly like the one in Filmora, we need to adjust some settings, such as speed and color. Then trim the effect so it only applies to the part where the purple circle comes near. For the glow, I'm going to use two versions. Glow 3 will be applied to the purple circle, just like we did in Filmora by giving it a shadow. Glow 2 will be used as an adjustment layer above all the layers. Finally, by adding a text layer and typing a full line of underlines, then going to the curve option and increasing it to the maximum, we can create a wave circle. We need to adjust the number of underlines until it looks rounder. Now, there's a problem. Since we can't create a keyframe on size, this is where things get a little tricky. We need to create a compound clip for the text layer first, but before that, Let's change its color and add a glow effect. After creating the compound clip, we need to add position and scale keyframes and keep adjusting them on the gray circle to create a scaling up effect. Then we need to create a fade out effect by keyframing the opacity just before the wave circle reaches its maximum. Also, we need to move the layer below all the other layers.
But I noticed that for the first time, CapCut is lagging on my PC, maybe because of the large number of compound clips we created. It's time to start working on our second animation. Let's start by creating a gradient circle, then duplicate it and make the bottom layer a little bigger. Now, from the effects menu, search for directional blur and add it between the layers so it only affects the bottom layer. Increase the blur to the maximum. Next, let's add a rotation keyframe for the blur at the beginning of the clip. Go to the last frame and increase the rotation significantly. This gives the shape a rotating halo effect, which looks cool. Now, select all the layers and create a compound clip. Duplicate the compound clip layer and position both layers on the left and right. Now, create the wave circle as shown in the previous lesson. Then, choose the line tool and draw a line. Let's change the line color to yellow and make it a little bit thicker. Then, let's enable the shadow and decrease the distance to the minimum. Also, set the shadow color to yellow so it looks like a glow. Place the line layer below all the other layers. Create a compound clip for this layer as well. Now, go to the mask and choose Linear Mask. Rotate the mask first. Just before the wave circle appears, move the mask position to the right. Just a couple frame before, move the mask to left. I added a text and glow layer, and that's it. As for CapCut, the steps are the same. However, instead of directional blur, we use motion blur since CapCut lacks that feature. Also, since CapCut doesn't have a shape tool, we use underlines to create a line and then make a compound clip. For the final steps, we use a split mask to make the line appear gradually. With a few finishing touches and some text, we can create this animation in CapCut. Now, let's move on to our final animation. Just like we did before, I'm going to draw a circle and apply a gradient color to it. I'll also add a border to the circle and make it slightly thicker. Now, I'll scale it up and place it in the middle of the screen. This part is important. It shouldn't be too small. Next, let's create a compound clip for it. Then, go to the Effects menu, select Water Wave, and apply it to the circle layer. You'll notice the circle starts waving. We'll increase the wave intensity to the maximum from the Settings panel. Now, I'll create position keyframes every 4 to 5 seconds. At the beginning of the clip, I'll move the circle down. At the midpoint, the circle should be centered on the screen. And for the final keyframe, I'll move it down again. Using the shape tool, Let's create another circle. This time, I don't need a fill color, just a border, so I'll make the border thicker and set it to gray. Let's duplicate the border layer and change the top layer's border color to pink. Now, go to the Transitions menu, search for the Clock Wipe effect, and apply it to the purple circle border. This effect will create a wiping animation. I'll drag and drop the same effect onto the same layer again, but this time on the second half of the layer, so it appears and wipes again. At this stage, I need to fine-tune the timing between the wave circle rising and the border animation, so that everything syncs well. I'll adjust the keyframes accordingly. Now, select the Wave Circle layer and create another compound clip. Then, go to the Mask Settings and choose Circle. 
I'll adjust the circle mask so that the wave animation stays within the borders. Finally, I'll select all layers and create a final compound clip. From the effects menu, I'll add a color glow effect above all layers. With a few text elements and final touch-ups, we've successfully created this animation in Filmora. Now, let's create the same animation in CapCut. I started by creating and adding a gradient circle. Then, from the effects menu, I applied the gentle ripples effect to the layer. Just like in Filmora, I'll add position keyframes every four to five seconds to make the waving circle appear and then move down. Since CapCut doesn't have a shape tool for creating borders, I'll add a text layer and type the letter O. As you can see, the default O font is quite thick, so we need something thinner. Don't worry, I've included the font name in the video description. Now, let's change the color to gray. Then, I'll duplicate the layer and change the duplicate's color to pink. Now comes the tricky part. While selecting the purple border, go to Animations, then Out, and choose Clock Wipe. This will add a clock wipe effect at the end of the layer. However, we also need the same effect at the beginning. To achieve this, first I'll duplicate the layer, then I create a compound clip. Now, reverse the layer. After that, trim both layers, the right and left, until the middle. Now, I need to sync the animation and keyframes so that everything moves in harmony. After that, I'll select the wave circle layer and create a compound clip. Then I'll go to the mask section, choose circle, and adjust the mask so that the wave effect only appears inside the border. And just like that, we're done. No matter which program we choose, we can usually figure things out with creativity. But let's be honest. If Adobe didn't exist, and I had to pick one of these programs, I would choose Filmora. It has essential tools like the Shape Tool, is more affordable, and simplifies motion graphics. I've also added all project files for download in the description, plus a few other motion graphics projects you can use. 